Well, good afternoon, everyone, around Australia on the Seven National Network. It's evening in the eastern states, but still afternoon here, and a sensational development just prior to the running of the Australian Derby, the Channel 7 Australian Derby, Jim Chadwick, with Roman artists being withdrawn. Yes, uh, Peter, I'd like to welcome viewers right throughout Australia to our recovery of today's derby, and as Peter was saying, it is a sensation. I understand he may have suffered a scouring attack this morning and uh, has been withdrawn from the derby on uh, Stewart's orders, but he would have been one of the chances, but I was still very frightened of his hanging habit, Peter, but now it looks like rap and rave is uh, just about a good thing. Well, I suppose it is as close to a good thing as you can get. Uh, the man who'll be able to tell us, that's Harvey Deegan, because he's in the betting ring with bookmaker Russell Roberts. Harvey, what's happening? Peter, well, with the scratching of Roman artist, it's caused the favourite rant and rave to tighten even further in the market. For a long time in the ring, he was odds on. He's eased a little bit now to uh, even money, but still well and truly the hot pot, of course. The horse endeavouring to uh, stage the hit and run raid, Mystic Monarch, he's at four to one. Bill Bangera fives. There's been some money for I'm in luck. The Robert Holmes Court owned horse in from fives to nine to two. And then uh, Star Joe twelves, Dream Lodge sixteens, and then just about write your own ticket for the rest. Bookmaker Russell Roberts, uh, who's your tip for the race and how do you think it'll be run? Well, Harv, I think Rant and Rave will win it. I think he's going to have too much class. I think Mystic Monarch is an obvious danger from Victoria, but we don't know too much about him. But the raps are big on the horse. Well, who's going to lead now that Roman Artis is out? Well, that's anyone's guess, but I uh, tip Bill Bingara won't be far off the lead today. And I think there's been heavy support for the horse, and I think he's going to be in the first second all the way. Uh, what about betting activity in the ring? Uh, Roman Artis kill business a little bit? Yes, I think he would have been well supported, but unfortunately he's come out and he's taken a lot of interest away because he definitely would have led in the race and it would have been a very hard run race. Today I think it's going to develop into a sprint home. All right, Russell Roberts, thank you very much indeed. Let's return now to Peter Waltham in our central commentary position. Harvey, thanks very much. Well, the key, of course, today is the Channel 7 Australian Derby carrying a stake of $210,000 to the winner. What do you think of Russell's comments, Jim? I think he's pretty well spot on, Peter. Uh, rant and rave. Even money, uh, I expected him to be odds on, really. Even money uh, now isn't a bad price, I think. Although uh, I'm in luck, it's a horse that I've got a lot of respect for. Its preparation has been timed to the minute, and I think it's going to be right there at the finish. Rant and rave's going to have it all his own way. And horses like King Matthias and Just Begun, they're pretty good stayers, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them at the finish. The big question mark in the race is number three, Mystic Monarch, Peter. It's arrived here on the plane this morning, and uh, it's cost them 30000 to get it here so they must think it's got a real big chance. Well, we'll be talking to Darren Gouchy, in fact, about that a little later. The other feature race you'll be seeing, of course, on the Christmas Carnival is the Perth Cup, which is run on New Year's Day. And a trial race for that is the CB Cox Stakes, which was run here just a few minutes ago. And here's a call that gives, I suppose, race commentators heart attacks as two of the horses in the betting for the Perth Cup fight out the finish. Here's Jim Chadwick. Gate Spring, they're off and racing in this year's Cox Stakes. Prince Nage began well over on the outside. Bold Endeavour showing speed with Adventure World. Down near the inside, another lover with Amber's double. Onto the course proper they race and a keen tussle for the lead. Importune has ranged up on the outside of Poppy's nose in front. Over on the fence, another lover now going through to take the lead. Adventure World tucked away on the fence, followed by Prince Nage. Amber's double next on the inside of Bold Endeavour. One and a quarter to Little Imagil there, followed three to strike rate. And Gypsy Blood and about three back to Tactics. Inside the circuit mark and up to the 1800 they go. And the leader, another lover, bowling along one length to the good of Impur Tune with a perfect sit over the pacemaker. Running through a third adventure world on the inside. Prince Nage on the outside of Amber's double. Midfield is Bold Endeavour in the blue and white colours. Little Imagil scraping paint behind them. They have followed one and a quarter to strike rate Gypsy Blood and Tactics. Inside the 1600, the pace very steady, where another lover carries the lamp. One and a quarter out from Impur Tune. June. Adventure World hugging the rail, running third. Up on the outside, Prince Nage. There, followed by Amber's double. Bold Endeavour on the outside. Back behind them on the paint is Little Imagil. Strike rate is forced to tramp three wide on the outside of Gypsy Blood. And back at the rear of the field is Tactics. Down the back they go now and up to the 1200. The leader is another lover. Leading out from Importune and now came off the fence to go out and tackle him. Bold Endeavour made its move also. There, followed by Prince Nage just behind them with Adventure World being kicked along on the fence. Further back in the field, a strike rate with Amber's double. There followed by Gypsy Blood, Little Imagil and four away to Tactics. 900 to go in the Cox Stakes. Another lover, still the leader. It kicked away again, one and a quarter from Importuna. Bold Endeavours winding up on the outside. They have another go at it now. They have followed one and a quarter back to Gypsy Blood, making its runner. They have followed by Prince Nation, strike rate, Adventure World's under sufferance. Amber's double now starts to make a sweeping run. They have followed one and a quarter back to Little Imagil, getting a crack with a whip. And four away to tactics.
Cox a little over 400 to go in the Cox Stakes and Importune on the outside on the inside another lover three wide to Bold Endeavour Prince Nage looking for a run behind them Gypsy Blood down the outside and also running on pretty well Amber's double into the stretch with 2.50 to go and Importune kick to the leader it's Importune one and a half in front of Gypsy Blood Amber's double out of the ruck running home it's Importune in front Amber's double trying to cut it down Importune Amber's double they hit it Importune Amber's double they have nailed Importune on the post. Bold Endeavour just behind them. Not a bad Perth Cup trial. Adventure World Tactics, Gypsy Blood, Prince Nage, Little Imagil, another lover. They are followed by Strike Rate, and it was last home in this year's Cox Stakes. Well, Jim, it did nail it on the line. <laughs> I was nearly going to say Importune in the shadows of the post. Amber's double has, has reached out, and it's got there by a pimple. How lucky it was. It? And there wasn't too much in it. Let's take a break, and we'll be back here in Perth in just a moment. Friday. It's the mighty Kingston Town with Frank Treen on board. Kingston Town, one of the features, in fact, of uh, the carnival here today. And Frank Treen, one of the greatest jockeys ever produced in the West. But another great jockey today is Rodney Kemp, and he'll be aboard Rant and Rave. Jim, the horse that's carrying uh, most of the money, I think, of West Australians. Yes, Peter, uh, uh, Rodney Kemp, he's in sparkling form. He's already won a couple today, and uh, Rant and Rave is favourite for the Channel 7 Australian Derby. He's a top colt with a record of 15 starts for nine wins, and has only missed a place on two occasions. His great win in this year's WA Derby stamped him as the horse to beat in today's big race, and here are the closing stages. And Miller sent Bill Bangura around the outside to take the lead. Here comes Red and Rave with a good runner. They are followed by Scarvilla. And down the outside, Master Eclipse running on with I'm in luck. It's Bill Bangura in front. Rat and Rave now throws down the gauntlet. Bill Bangura, Rat and Rave. Rat and Rave, Bill Bangura. Nose to nose. Rat and Rave won the derby. Bill Bangura second. Tight for third. King Matthias rattled home with just begun. Well, he had to work pretty hard there, Peter, to win. Bill Bangor has served it up to him uh, in no mean order, but uh, Rad and Rave, he's a dour stayer, and uh, I think Buster O'Malley, the trainer, has got him ro cherry ripe for today's big race. Well, the other two horses, obviously, that are going to uh, play a major part in this race, uh, I'm in luck. And the horse you just mentioned, Bill Bangro. First of all, though, uh, let's talk about I'm in Lux run and the budget quality. Yes, I'm in Lux uh, preparation uh, has been timed at the minute by trainer Frank Maynard, and he showed that he could be a force to be reckoned with when he won the budget quality over 2,200 metres on December the 14th. They race up with 650 to go. Steppenwolf by two lengths now over Sinbad, who's feeling the pinch. Around the outside goes Dream Lodge with Adventure World. Then came I'm in Luck and Galway Union, followed by Prince Reeves. Zars Boris got knocked over. Out wide King Matthias from Eastern Flight just begun. Noah's Will and Paris Tram at the 315 of the home straight. Dream Lodge just led I'm in Luck and Steppenwolf. Then Galway Union, Adventure World. And to the Prince Reeves from King Matthias, but into the straight. And I'm in Luck has got up and graced away by two lengths over Dream Lodge then Adventure World, Galway Union followed by Steppenwolf but a hundred ago it's I'm in luck, it's all over I'm in luck is racing well clear three lengths over Dream Lodge and Adventure World and I'm in luck comes home to win by two and a half lengths over Adventure World Dream Lodge third well, there'll be no shortage of talent on board. I'm in luck over today, Jim. He has uh, the services of Mick Dittman, who's already won one of the feature races here today to carry Cutter Plate. Yes, uh, Mick Dittman, uh, no better rider in Australia than Mick Dittman. And of course, uh, if I'm in luck does win the derby, Mr Robert Holmes, of course, owns the horse and he's got to present the trophy, so that could provide a bit of a ticklish situation. Well, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, but now to the Blue Ribbon Quality and Bill Bangara. Yes, Bill Bangara from the powerful Tommy Smith stable. Bill Bangira taken on by Eastern Flight, a length and a half to Scar Villa. Then special welcome from Dream Lodge, Galway Union, Dance Act in Bother from Noah's Will and Prince Reeve. On the outside, Eastern Flight went to the front as they made the bend about a half over Bill Bangira. Two away to Scar Villa, Dream Lodge followed by Galway Union and Dance Act, 200 to go. It's Eastern Flight about ahead. Bill Bangira is lifting on the inside, followed by Galway Union, Scar Villa and Dance Act. Eastern Flight, Bill Bangira has regained the lead. What a great ride. Miller's got Bill Bangira home by a half a length over. Eastern flight, maybe dance act third from Galway Union. Well, we've just been advised that King Matthias has also been withdrawn, so we've had both Roman artist and King Matthias withdrawn today. It's certainly developing into a sensational derby. First Roman artist, now King Matthias has been withdrawn, just withdrawn a moment ago, owing to uh, veteran advice. The stewards took him out. We'll take a break and back for the running of the Channel 7 Australian derby with Jim Chadwick calling it after this break. 
an even money favourite as Mystic Monarch. By the looks of things, with Darren Gauchy aboard, is the last to go in for the running of the Channel 7 Australian Derby. With $210,000 and trophy at the end of it for the winning connections. To describe the call for you, your commentator, Jim Chadwick. Thanks, Peter. One horse to move in for this year's Channel 7 Australian Derby, and that's Sars Boris, the two scratchings, Roman Artist and a late stretching, very late stretching in King Matthias, scratched after doing his preliminary. They found him to be unfit. On well, advice of the, the uh, veterinary surgeon, the stewards took King Matthias out. Now they're standing up pretty well. I'm in luck. Down on the inside, Dance Act. Neil Bangra stands up well. Ran and Rave, a little bit toey in his box. Set to go. This is Keen, no, Jockey's just... eager. Three up to 50,000 at the judge, and there they go. Off and racing in this year's Channel 7 Australian Derby. Beginning well was Eastern Flight, and also Dynamic Dancer showing speed. I'm in Lux up there with Bill Banger over on the fence, out very deep to Mystic Monarch. Red and Raving trying to tug a little early. They're followed by Dream Lodge. I'm in Luck and a bundle of bother. Just begun on the outside, Paris Tram. Dance act over on the fence. Third from last is over on the outside, Galway Union. Second last, Star Joe, and last of all Sars Boris. Inside the circuit mark they go and Eastern Flight took over the role of placemaker. It leads out from Mystic Monarch. Racing three deep has just begun in a very compact field. On the fence Dynamic Dancer getting a great run. Rant and Rays right on top of the pace. Fifth in the middle. They are followed by Bill Banger on the fence. Over on the outside I'm in luck. They are followed back on the inside by Dance Act. Around them Galway Union. Further back in the field at Dream Lodge with Star Joe and Sars Boris whips them in. Inside the 1600 Eastern Flights clapped on the speed. It kicked out the lead about three from Mystic Monarch on the fence. Dynamic Dancer around them just begun in the centre. Rant and Rave Kemp's giving it a great run. Back on the fence, Bill Bangra, big race jockey Johnny Miller's giving it every chance. They are followed by Galway Union in the black cap around the outside. They are followed further back to I'm in luck with Dance Act. They are followed by Dream Lodge around the outside of Paris Tram. A length and a quarter back to Star Joe and Sars Borough still last of all. Down the back they go and up to the thousand. The action about to start where Eastern Flight is still the leader. Mystic Monarch running second. Back on the inside, Dynamic Dancer. It's had a charm run. On the outside, just begun. They're followed by Rat and Rave in the middle. Over on the outside, Galway Union. Dream Lodges around them four wide. They're followed by I'm in luck. Further back on the inside, then came Bill Banker. It's been carted back. Star Joe made a run around them. They're followed by Sars Boris, Paris Tram and Dance Act at the 600. And now the question's about to be asked. We'll find is the best three-year-old in Ascot in just a moment. Rat and Rave. Kemp has got a saloon run up on the fence to tackle Eastern Flight. Three wide is Mystic Monarch. They are followed further back in the field as Star Joe and getting up on the fence, Bill Bangara. For home they go. Rat and Rave in front. Bill Bangara coming home pretty well. Mystic Monarch and Star Joe down the outside. Eastern Flight battling on. Rat and Rave a couple in front. Bill Bangara trying to get to it with Star Joe. It's Rat and Rave in front. Kemp riding for dear life. Star Joe is lunging. Red and Rave, Star Joe, Star Joe! I reckon Star Joe's caused an upset and won the derby from either Red and Rave or Bill Bangra. They have followed further back to Dance Act, Mystic Monarch, Paris Tram. They have followed in by Zars Boris. Dream Lodge, I'm in luck. Further back in the field at Galway Union. Just begun Eastern Flight and you'll find Dynamic Dancer after having every chance has run last. I think there's a boil over Peter. Star Joe on the outside. I think Rant and Rave, well, he looked the winner with 50 to go, but Star Joe, at around about 16 to 1, has just about grabbed him on the post. Well, let's take a breather, and we'll come back with the official placings in just a moment. But the thing I've noticed... Most... ...this year's Channel 7 Australian Derby, Star Joe getting there right on the line. The number is in the frame. They've called for another print to decide second and third, and that is very, very tight. Bill Banger in the centre and over on the fence with Rant and Rave, but no doubt about Star Joe. Ridden a great race too by David Rudland to land the major prize, and uh, there was quite a few supporters. A big shout up uh, went up when uh, his number went into the frame, Star Joe. So there were a few people aboard, but it just shows you that good things can get beat, Peter. Well, it certainly got beaten today. Let's have a look how it happened. This is Rant and Rave in front. 
kept to secure that inside rein coming to the corner and uh, had to go. Maybe he had to go a little bit too early, earlier than he wanted to go. But at this stage, he looked as though he had them beaten. Bill Bangra, who was shuffled back coming to the corner, that was a mighty run. But here's Star Joe, the eventual winner, putting in a big claim right there on the outside. It had to cover a bit of ground and running. But uh, at this stage, Rant and Rave in front, but Star Joe and Bill Bangra running home hard. Rant and Rave still in front. Star Joe lunging at it right near home. Kemp's riding for dear life, but Star Joe going home a shade the better on the outside and has popped its head in front to win. And very close to that second place in not Simmer 40 well, Kemp, uh, Jim Kemp gave Rant and Rave every chance. He didn't cover any extra ground at all, so all credit to the winner who had to do it the hard way. For sure. Maybe uh, Rodney had to go that little bit earlier than he wanted to when he got that inside run coming to the turn. I don't think he wanted to go that uh, quick on it, but... Uh, that's the way things, you've got to take advantage when you get saloon runs like that, you've got to go, and when you've made your decision, you've got to make all haste for home. Here he is in front again, coming down the straight. Kemp at this stage, hands and heels. Unlucky, Bill Bangor could have been a bit unlucky. He was shuffled back about the 600 there, and uh, Miller's done a great job getting him into the clear. But Rodney's still hands and heels. He's feeling for the persuader here. He pulls it out, gives the big fellow a crack with it. He's responding in good style, rant and rave. Stretching every sinew, but... I just start to doubt whether he can uh, possibly stay. You know, the Perth Cup trip may be that little bit long for him. But it wasn't for Star Joe. And here's Star Joe and Bill Bangra grabbing it in a three-way go. Looks like asparagus heads in that finish there. And here's the head-on shot. Rat and Rave on the fence. I'm in luck just behind them in the wide cap. Bill Bangra inclined to hang out a bit. Eastern flight's gone. And right on the outside there is Star Joe. White is still the mystic monarch, but Rat and Rave with Bill Bangra just behind them and Star Joe, and you'll see David Rutland wave that whip. He knew he'd won the uh, Channel 7 Australian Derby and did a little bit of a Mickey Mellon there. A top run uh, by Bill Bangra. We're still waiting on uh, the official placings for second and third. While we're doing that, uh, here's Harvey Deegan, in fact, with the winning jockey, David Rutland. Well, we have with us uh, the rider of Star Joe, David Rutland. David, on national television, congratulations on a fantastic ride and what a win. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, of course, you knocked off uh, four or five of the hot pots. When did you think you had the race won? Uh, I cruised around him coming to the corner and I gave him a bit of a breather on the home turn and I thought, well, if he kicks once I straighten up, I thought he could win. Was the race run the way you thought it would be? Uh, well, with a scratching Roman artist, I thought the pace would have been on with him in the race. Uh, it changed after he was scratched and the race was running at a dawdling pace early and it suited my bloke down the ground. David, our Eastern States viewers may not know a lot about you, but you're a real big race jockey. Perhaps you could quickly tell everybody the races you have won, the big ones. Uh, well, offhand, I've won the first one I won was the Perth Cup, uh, cattle, cattle plates, uh, Towton Cups, whatever, you know, I've just about won every major race here. In the WA Derby, Star Joe was a bit unlucky, so sweet revenge today? He was very unlucky in the Western Australian uh, Derby. And, um, yeah, it is very sweet revenge today. Congratulations, David Rudland, the rider of Star Joe, winner of the Channel 7 Australian Derby. Back to our central commentary position now. Yes, he's a pretty good, had a pretty good mentor, his father, Lindsay Rudland, a very accomplished horseman. He won the Perth Cup here, and we have the numbers to hand now. Second number goes to number four, Bill Bangara, written by John Miller, and a nose away in third place, number one, Rant and Rave, Rodney Kemp. So the complete placings in the Derby, six, four, and one. Number six, Star Joe. Star Joe, a three-year-old chestnut colt by Starway from Ali Joe, owned by Mr. Brian Mews, uh, bred by Mr. Elliot, New Zealand bred horse, trained here in Perth by Jimmy Dixon, who turned the horse out looking a picture of fitness and topped off with a magnificent ride by David Rudlin. As an interesting sidelight, Jim, uh, rant and rave, of course, uh, with the scratching of Fizam, uh, was going to be all the rage for the Perth Cup, but having a look at the closing stages of that race, as we've seen it there three times, uh, the 3,200 metres, uh, we mightn't even see Rant and Rave start. Yes, I wouldn't write him off completely if he happened to settle in the Perth Cup and Rod could hold him up for that one final run. But as you say, it looks a little bit iffy whether he'll get the 3,200. Bulliat, I think, is going to be very hard to beat J.J. Miller. J.J. Miller, well, our Eastern States viewers certainly uh, would know of J.J. Miller, who had the honour of winning the Caulfield and the Melbourne Cup double. And if we get some weather, of course, on uh, the weekend, or New Year's Day, as we've had today, it'll also be an interesting sidelight because, uh, as some of our viewers may not know, on the course here at Ascot, you, in fact, run uphill twice, which uh, is a pretty tough assignment. But let's go back to Harvey Deegan because he's with the man in just a moment. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to talk to Jimmy Dixon, the trainer 
of Star Joe, just repeating the official placings in the Channel 7 Australian Derby. Number six, Star Joe, David Rudland first. Number four, Bill Bangara, JJ Miller second. And number one, Ranton Rave, the even money favourite, Rodney Kemp third. Officially fourth was number 15, Dance Act. And officially fifth was number three, Mystic Monarch also, uh, which wasn't a bad run. Okay, Harvey's with us to talk to the trainer, Jim Dixon. Harvey. Now we have Jim Dixon, the victorious trainer of the winner of the Channel 7 Australian Derby. I think you uh, surprised many of the scribes, Jim, with your win. Oh, well, you know, might have surprised them, but I, was quite, I knew he'd run a big race today. I knew, he, you know, he was capable of matching most of them. When Roman Artist came out, did you have to quickly sit, uh, sit down and revise your tactics? No, no, I don't give, didn't give instructions. You know, jockeys like Rudland have been going around long enough and you don't have to tell him what to do. He's ridden the horse and he knows him. I just told him to keep out of trouble and, you know, give him every chance. Now, the horse is owned by Brian Muse, but I understand you had a part in the purchase of the horse. What did you pay for him? Oh, I bought him in uh, New Zealand. I went over for a trip to New Zealand with, uh, and bought three. And uh, I bought him for... Uh, I think it was $4,000 New Zealand, $2,800 our money, I think, everybody. Jim, Jim, you train at uh, a suburb called Wanneroo, north yeah, of Perth. Yeah. Uh, how many other horses do you have in training? Oh, I only have a small team, four or five. You know, I'm only a hobby trainer. Yeah, obviously your biggest win ever. Now, what's in the future? Oh, well, you know, we'll think about that, uh, Harvey. I haven't uh, given that much thought. I'm still in shock, you might say. <laughs> Good on you, Jim. Congratulations to you. Back to you, Pete. OK, thank you very much, Harvey. Uh, to our friends in the eastern states, we hope you've enjoyed the coverage. Just a reminder, of course, uh, the Railway Stakes, uh, Jim, is the next feature race to be followed by the Perth Cup, which, of course, is run on New Year's Day. Uh, a tip for both of those before we leave? Well, the Railway Stakes, maybe Laurie Connell will have better luck in the railway. He's got a horse called Concrete engaged, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Concrete get the money in this year's railway. As far as the Perth Cup, John Miller, if you back him in a big race, you've got a bit in your favour. So I think in the Perth Cup, all that is going to give a real big side. OK, Jim, so the official placings in the Channel 7 Australian Derby is the presentations are just about to be made. Just repeating them for you. Number six, Star Joe, written by David Rudland, first. Number four, Bill Bangara, written by J.J. Miller, was second. And Ranton Rave, the even money favourite, written by Rod Kemp, finished in third place. The uh, stake money, in case you're interested, $210,000, including trophies to the winner. So as Jim Dixon just said, uh, he's still in a sh state of shock. The champagne will no doubt be flowing very happily tonight. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage on the Seven National Network. We'll say goodbye from Perth. This is a...